so that's kind of where I'm going. Uh, I started yesterday. I really need to go in and smooth a little bit though. And you guys could go in with your hand. You could go in with a tool, whatever's gonna work best for you. I like to also use like a paintbrush and a little bit of water. And I think I'm gonna like try to round these off a little bit so that they're not so harsh. Kind of blend the clay in. Like I said, if you're making something functional, you want to make sure that you don't have any of those little crumbly pieces in there. And I'm bringing all I did to start this out was taking a paintbrush and forming the little indents by pressing it in. I'm going to smooth this. And then I also want to make sure that like I smooth the rest of it into the indentations so it doesn't look so uh, strange. Could you have left it a regular line? Absolutely. I just think I'm gonna build up a little bit more in the center of it because like I said, this will kind of end up being a hodgepodge of all different types of techniques. A hodgepodge. Before I go any further on this dish and add in anything else, I'm going to go over how to make a little foot on the bottom. Uh, if you, you know, you've seen on like plates and stuff, I'm sure at home there's always like a small ring on the bottom of platters and things like that. You can include it if you would like to, but I'm just going to go over how you can add that in. Super simple, just using a coil. You're gonna want it to be, you know, a fairly thin coil. And you could decide how far out you want it to be. I know that some of you did add these onto your functional sets, uh, whether you're, you kind of carved it out or added it on. So you're just gonna kind of take your piece figure out where you would want your foot to be. I feel like it just kind of naturally starts to flow like this. I don't like to do it too far in the middle. And I'm gonna smooth that together. And now you would smooth just like you would a coil pot. I like to think of it, um, as I said, like way early on in the class, like the thirds method. So one third, the other third, and then you have this little bit that's left. And you can make this as tall or as short as you want to. Uh, this tends to just add something a little bit extra if you are creating like a little vase or a dish. Uh, primarily when working on the pottery wheel, uh, this is something that a lot of people do um, to really finish off their piece nicely. Not everyone, and not for every form, but a lot of them. And 
if you're with me next year, you'll we'll go over all that stuff when we do uh, pottery. Get some nice little feet on there. And the reason I wanted to go over this is I know a lot of you do have a little bit of a vase form or a platter and you're building off of it. So I thought if you did want to add on a little foot, this could be something to make it a little bit more special. But I'm being really light with it, really delicate, because I don't want to affect like the integrity of the structure that I'm working with. Making sure it looks nice and smooth too, because it, it, you know, it is a part of the sculpture. Uh, a foot is really nice too, because then when you go in and glaze something, you can glaze everything except like this little ring here. So you have a much nicer finish. This makes it look a little, uh, a little more professional. go in and do the inside. I'm going to use this tool. The little end of the wooden knife to help me really smooth it. Get it nice and even. Because it's such a narrow space, Kind of hard to get my hand in there. Uh, take your time with this. I'm trying to go through pretty quickly so that I could cover as much as I can. Also, not applying too much pressure, and it's, it's very strange with ceramics, and you'll kind of learn, like, as you go on, and maybe you have already, like, you know, with, with this class, there's a fine line between the amount of pressure you want to use and when it's, like, a little bit too much. Like, you want to use just enough, especially, like, also when, like, holding a piece, things like that. You want to hold it lightly, but also like firm at the same time. It's very odd, but I feel like you kind of start to understand over time. And I'm just kind of like swiping this over as after I smooth every few. And then you could see now I have a nice, uh, kind of skinny foot, so it's not, you know, really taking away too much. This foot is a little tall. You can make them a little shorter if you want to, but I really wanted to like elevate the form so that I could build more things underneath it when I'm, um, you know, demoing more techniques for you guys on Thursday. And I just said on Thursday. I don't like when I say dates because then I can't reuse these videos. Ooh, well. So now I have a, you know, pretty clean foot. There is some brown clay in here. I could go in and scrape it out, but you know, I think that's fine. I'm gonna go over and glaze it. I'm not too concerned about it. Flip it over. 
And now I have a nice little foot Oop. holding up my tray. And I'm just gonna go in and kind of reshape it a little bit. But I think I'm gonna do like things like built up from here too. So one big thing a lot of people were looking at were like those, you know, little curled up barnacle pieces. So I'm gonna go over that first. And I'm gonna kind of start like building them on in there. I really don't like how this is. Hmm. What I wanna do here. gonna scrape some of that off. I'm not loving it. I want to go back in. And you know what? It's okay to alter your pieces. There we go. Much better. making those little barnacle pieces super simple um, you are gonna want to be able to slip and score them on though so make sure that you do have some slip uh, like I said if you want to make some in the color clay you're using and then kind of like pack it up so that you have it I think that's a good idea So good because you could kind of go in and paint some of your areas up and that will create a little bit better of a finish as well but I think I might go in and do that at the end after I add things on to here but this is just a little bit of water and I did put a little vinegar in it just so that it kind of blended a little bit better. And you never want to like saturate your whole project, just painting like little pieces at a time. And you could always go back in, but you don't want it to get too mucky. All right, and let's see if I could kind of do that little wood grain thing today too. I'm gonna set this aside. Because this clay is a little bit dry. But I'm gonna flatten it out and then I'm gonna let it sit to the side for a little bit. Oops, sorry. And sometimes you just like find things that work for you and it's always it's kind of cool to always like discover new ceramic techniques so I'm gonna flatten this out you could flatten out as much clay as you'd like to uh, but I'm gonna go in and do some of like those little barnacle pieces right now And I think layering them, just like layering petals on a flower, um, really helps as you go along. A lot of you, I'm sure, are using coiled forms in your pieces, and that's fine too. Uh, like I said, I don't know if Sarah heard me before, she has kind of like this donut form. I could go over that as well. But essentially, it would be creating two really, um, you know, oversized slabs and then putting them together um, after you cut out like the larger donut shape.
All right. Super, super simple, and you could decide if you want them to be a little bit more organic or a little bit more precise. But you're gonna cut a piece of clay, a little slab, pinch it out so it's nice and thin, and you're just gonna kinda roll it over on itself. Now, sometimes I like to keep this little bit flared out at the end so that I could attach it to something easier, um, slip and score it on. So it's not gonna just be like this piece straight up and down. I could go ahead and I could attach it onto something. And that's how I'm gonna use it here. And you know, this clay's a little dry, but that's okay. It's okay. I'll go in and I'll paint it up a little bit. Cutting a strip. And like I said, I know you guys don't have pin tools at home because I couldn't set up home. But if you want to go in and use like a, like a plastic knife or something like that, you can make them taller, you can make them shorter, you can make them larger. Um, but really it's just kind of folding the clay in on itself and then smoothing it together. So you kind of play around with it. And if I have one like this that is flat, I probably would consider pinching it at the bottom so that I have an area to attach it on. So I'm going to make a, like a little variety. Like I said, this is going to become just a random, random thing here. I'm going to cut that off, make this one a little bit neater. It's almost like you're making like a little cinnamon roll. I mean, you could just fold it in half if you want to, or if you want to fold it over on itself a few times. But like I said, I'm gonna always keep a little bit. I want a little bit to attach it to something. And let's just make one more. Yeah, you could probably use your wooden knife to cut it as well. gonna fold this one in too. Be delicate with it because it is um, it does have like a tendency to kind of sink in so just really smooth it lightly. So I think I'm going to use these three that are a little bit more abstract. That's kind of cool. Um, I feel like maybe if I was going to do that, I would want them all to be like this. So I'm going to use these three pieces. Now I feel like, okay, you know, they're these little barnacle things I could put together, but I don't know, they're kind of a little simple. I think I'm going to add some texture in them as well. plug my computer in. Okay. 
so I have this little extra to attach it on and uh, I'm gonna go over like extra on like little floral designs too um, in order to add those on but there's lots of different things that you guys could make textures with I'm gonna take just like this little green knife that I have here and I'm gonna go in and just kind of start adding like some textures at random And you could play around, see what you like. I'm almost making like kind of like little cross hatch marks. something to like, you know, get it to stand out a little bit. Maybe on this one, I will use the end of the paintbrush and do almost like some little dots in it. And you could look at coral textures, things like that. I'm just kind of going with like the tools I have in front of me. What can I do with them? It's okay if it alters the structure a little bit. So now I have two that are a little bit more decorative. What to do with this one? Huh. What do I got? I'll just take this color pencil here and draw some random lines in it. Definitely gonna have to clean it up later, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take these now and I'm gonna attach them to the back of my leaf and have them kind of like coming up on the side here. So because I have all this extra clay, I have a lot of room to smooth on. I'm gonna lift this up. Add a few little score marks and a little teensy bit of slip. And then I'm going to start assessing where do I want to put these. I really like this one on the front, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach that one first. And I'm using all that extra to smooth into the dish itself. And I'll go in with this one and put it back here. And right now it's like, oh, these random things sticking off, but I'm gonna add a lot more to it to really create almost like a sea vibe. So that's kind of just like my first little bit. I'll add that one overlapping a little bit right there. So we got this strange thing going on. I'm really smoothing in the back too. 
I'm probably gonna wait till tomorrow to flip it over. But I'm starting to build up something kind of strange to look up. I'm definitely gonna add something over this because I feel like it's a definitely unfinished. But that's the start. It kind of looks like a like a leaf heart or something. <laughs> All right, let's see if I could get this wood texture going with this piece of clay I have here. If not, I might just have to let a piece of clay rest out. And I know it was a really, really thin piece of clay that she had worked with. She really kind of like stuck it down and then pushed the clay. like this wood direction way so it's kind of just making like little lines in it but depending on what pattern you do you could get some pretty interesting texture and then just kind of pushing it together there we go so after you break it up a little bit maybe in like a few different areas then just kind of start to compress it together a little bit and you could start to get like a really interesting texture that way so maybe i will go in and i'll cut out a little bit of this kind of like where it ends there line my leaf with this. Okay, I like this. I'm going to bring this in right over here, right to the top and kind of cover up that section. And I'll have like a really nice, really strong texture there. And I'm just going to smooth it in, wrap it around. So sometimes like this project's all about just experimenting with different things. Now this part's definitely pretty heavy through here. Uh, I think what I might do is just put a little bit of paper towel underneath so that it stays up until the rest is balanced out. But, all right, okay, we're going places, people. So that might be a good technique to use if you do have some wood texture. Um, to kind of start out with and then from there you could carve a little bit more. And I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. 